Greetings, Game Cola faithful, and welcome to the Game Cola podcast. This is podcast number 103, and with me today, I have Anna Bernarski and Alex Jodorzak, along with myself, your podcast commander, Joseph Martin. Everyone, please introduce yourselves. Hi, I'm Anna Bernarski, and I actually play video games sometimes. Hi, I'm Alex Jodorzak, and I actually, surprisingly enough, also occasionally play a video game. But today we're not talking about games that we're playing. We're talking about games that we're gonna play in the future. Because whoa, if you've whoa, been whoa. paying attention at all to anything except this also, but also paying attention to this very specific thing, um, you would know that the Nintendo Switch was announced. Yay! Yay! And everyone agreed that NX sounds way cooler, but <laughs> Switch is much more appropriate. <laughs> Does everyone agree with that? I feel like that's the general I, sentiment. Yeah. I, I think Switch has been growing on me, but yes, when it was announced, I was like, what? What are they thinking? NX, NX sounds way cooler. It's got an X in it. It does. Like... <laughs> and it's like the Nintendo X. And like, yeah. <laughs> Nintendo X. <laughs> and like, I mean, at least they did better than like the Wii New or the Wii 2 or something. <laughs> <laughs> the Wii, you mean the Wii U? Something like that. Something that they should definitely not name a console. New Super Nintendo Wii 2. <laughs> <laughs> Go with the, the Mario Brothers name scheme. So, okay, we'll, we'll quickly let you know in case you haven't figured out already what the Switch is about. So, the basic concept is, and you can check out Nintendo's trailer on it, but basically... You've got this little tablet-sized device, tablet-shaped. It's got a screen like a tablet. And you, you chuck it into this plastic thing that connects it up to your TV, and you've got your wireless controller, and you can play the games on the TV. But then, when you're done with the TV, but you still want to play your games, you just slide it out of the little plastic thing, and all of a sudden the game's in your hand on a little tablet thing. Yep, you switch it up. Mm-hmm, yeah. Get it? Yeah, I, I know, I got it. Yeah. I, I... <laughs> So that's interesting. Do we do we have any thoughts about that? I'm really excited. I guess uh, I'm hopeful that it will actually, you know, work as advertised. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, you know, in concept, I guess it's kind of moving along the lines like it's a natural progression from like the Wii to the Wii U to the Switch. It's just uh, the next evolution, I guess. Yeah. It seems like I don't know. It seems kind of like this would be the a hybridization of like their console and handheld console markets, yeah. right? Like I, I'm not really sure how the 3DS fits into this, and it might just be that it fits until people don't want a 3DS anymore. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of thinking that myself, especially as they're releasing. Um, they have the like ninety nine dollar uh, sale going on. For the 3ds uh, for Black Friday, yeah. Mm. It's like, uh, what what exactly are their plans for the 3ds? I mean, the 3ds has been out for a pretty long. The 3ds has been out longer than the Wii U, right? Yeah, I think so. The 3ds came out in 2011, and the Wii U came out in 2012. Wow. But there's also new 3ds, which <laughs> I don't think anything requires except Xenoblade Chronicles. And apparently, if you want to play Earthbound. Really? Yeah, which is why I bought it. <laughs> you bought a new 3DS for Earthbound? I bought it, yeah, mostly for Earthbound. <laughs> yeah. I think there was also a Monster Hunter game that you could only play yeah. on the new 3DS. Well, we're on that. You know, like, how does this, uh, how does this Switch fit into the uh, handheld slash console paradigm? It's well, trying it's... to be like both. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's weird because like Nintendo basically kind of just won the handheld console market. Like, yeah. like it's even though the 3DS like was met with a lot of criticism, mm -hmm. it's still like really the only like in, the only handheld console that's like viable. Yeah. I don't even know if the Vita still exists mm -hmm. or if that was even the last thing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's the thing is um. The only other, like, handheld consoles that I know of were, like, oh, it's a micro console that no one's ever going to actually develop for. Right. That's something that was kickstarted. Yeah. Like, um, <laughs> and it, oddly enough, 
a couple of those did also have the functionality to plug into a TV, but I think they just had like an HDMI port or something. Mm. Um, so like the Nintendo Switch, oddly enough, isn't actually the first one to try doing this, but it's probably the only one that would have any, you know, concept of success. Yeah, because like I guess it's sort of like the mobile market is sort of now the only thing that Nintendo's handheld is really competing with. And so in order to sort of differentiate, because it seems like Nintendo's strategy in general has just to be like, do some sort of niche that the other, that the competitors just won't do because they're not going to be completely dedicated to video games. So like what what kind of area can they focus on that something that has to be general purpose can't, right? Because yeah. with computers, they have to be general. They don't just play games. They have to be general purpose. They have to, you know, be browsers and art things and other things that people use computers for, I guess. Yeah. And then your phone has to, like, you know, be a calculator and be your window to social media. And I think, like, if you press a certain button, you can, like, hear another person on the other side. But I don't think yeah. anyone uses that anymore. Whoa. I don't... I don't... <laughs> That's a joke. I just called, like, three people today. <laughs> But yeah, so like with the, when PC was sort of like just being in real direct competition with consoles, Nintendo was just like, oh, well, we'll just do motion controls because that's really hard to just do on a computer. Yeah. And it seems like now they're sort of, their answer to the mobile market is, well, we're going to make something that's fancier enough <laughs> that you can't like compare it directly. So it's. At least slightly, but the the tablet experience, I would imagine, the goal is to have it be at least better than like an iPad. I think also um, just the controls, because like it's not like there doesn't seem to be motion controls, and there doesn't seem to be touch controls. Yeah, that was that was my question. Because like no, really, it, I don't think there are. Because you put it in like the dock yeah. to connect it to the TV, so you wouldn't be able to. You wouldn't be able to make a game that had touch controls with it, I don't think. Hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Which I mean... makes me wonder, though, if it's going to, like, let you... Because remember, like, the Wii U, like, used Wii controllers. Now, I don't think this is going to use Wii controllers at all. Hmm. But I do wonder, like... Because especially with Zelda Breath of the Wild being for both of them, for both the Wii U and the Switch, I wonder if there's going to be a way that you can connect your gamepad up to it. Hmm. And it would be completely optional... Which I think is what most people want out of Nintendo's wacky, like ideas. It's like it's cool as long as it's just optional. Yeah. Like no one's going to complain that you can connect your Wii U gamepad. <laughs> but it might be interesting for like drawing stuff because I know that like that was a big part of the Wii U was like people being able to draw basically. Wait, so the the Wii U had <laughs> touch screen. <laughs> Yeah, big tab yeah. with the gamepad. I had no idea. <laughs> have you even touched a Wii U ever, Jetty? I have not been. The closest I have been to a Wii U has probably been about maybe 10 feet, where it was like in a store that I was passing by. <laughs> Gamecola.net, where we play video games sometimes. Sometimes. I did say sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, the the Wii U tablet gamepad. Yeah, you we can touch have it. never claimed to play games <laughs> yes. that are new. Yes, look, look, look. So I, I am PC master race. Thank you. <laughs> Con uh, consoles are not for me. So it will it will be interesting. So to, to uh, unless anyone else has anything more to say about just the general design of the Switch. I don't have anything to say about the design. I'm excited for all the third-party developers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that they showed. I mean, that's exciting. I, I think like it's... just good to see how many people like have already hopped on board. But are those I don't know. those new developers or are they ports? Because a lot of what I saw were ports. I'm not it's... sure. But the Wii U also like had like a lot of port support. Mm -hmm. Ha 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 at the beginning mm. and then like nothing mm. really came of it yeah i don't know i guess um i mean i wrote an article on that uh <laughs> which i think we briefly mentioned is the nintendo switch good for developers 
it's going to be a lot easier for people to pull games from other systems onto the Switch, I feel, because it has a more normal control scheme. And also that if third-party developers want to target the Switch as their main thing, it will not be like developing for the Wii U, where, oh, we have to try to use this gamepad somehow, kind of try to cram that in there, and then, oh, a few years later, it's just no longer supported, really, and nobody ever bought it. <laughs> so, like, I think... I bought it. <laughs> I think developers kind of knew it wasn't going to be successful, and so they avoided developing for it, um, mm. which then, you know, progressively spiraled downward and led to it never being really that popular. But the Switch, on the other hand... Uh, <laughs> sounds like it has. Because well, it's, yeah. Because I mean, like, it seems that it wouldn't be that wouldn't be particularly different than any other console in terms of programming for it. Except like under like the only thing that I can think of is like you have to visually you have to design it so that it looks good on a smaller screen as well as a big screen. Yeah, and also um, you know, assuming that it keeps with Nintendo's performance targets that it's always kind of had is a. Uh, Something a little lighter on processing. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's going to be in tablet form, though. Like I don't like I don't know how much power you're really going to be able to get out of that. That'd be interesting to see. I mean, like the the fact of the matter is, like a Wii U isn't that big. No. And so, like you take like to put a Wii U to say, okay, let's let like say let's get we're going to make something as powerful as the Wii U, which was made in 2012, right? Yeah. It's four years later. It'll, it'll be kind of five years later. Technology has advanced that we can shrink it down a little bit and have the same amount of power. So I, I think it should be at least as good as the Wii U. I feel like if it wasn't, people would be very upset. <laughs> <laughs> but why don't, we, why don't we talk about some of the games? So first of all, there's Zelda Breath of the Wild, which has been announced. It's the only official, I think, like new game from Nintendo that's been announced for the Wii for the Nintendo Switch. Yeah. It has been rumored that the game is going to be delayed from launch. Oh my god. <laughs> this game is never actually happening. <laughs> but they are definitely still making a Wii U version. <laughs> so don't worry about that. You know, you will get your Wii U version, and, and, and from what I've heard, like some of the rumors even said that it's only the it's only the Switch version that's getting significantly delayed, and maybe the Wii U version will come out not at the Switch's launch, but like close to it. Hmm. I like how you said maybe come out, like maybe it'll actually happen. Well, these maybe these are all happen. rumors. I want to I want to point out that these are all rumors and nothing official. <laughs> But there isn't really a lot of new information about the Switch from it over the past month because they're not really going to talk about it more until January, apparently. So uh, the, now the other rumor, which is more promising, is if you recall from the Switch trailer, there was a few brief clips of something that looked a lot like a 3D Mario platformer. It yeah. was. And that is rumored to be a launch title. And also focused a lot of Mario 3D tile that's focused on exploration. So, which people have taken that to mean like more levels like uh, Super Mario 64, where there's a lot of objectives in one area. And you sort of like get to know the whole level. I guess Sunshine was like that too. So more like, more like 64 and Sunshine than maybe Galaxy or definitely more than Galaxy 2. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start a rumor. That there, <laughs> that there is not going to be a uh, a Mario Kart game for this system at all. At all? Yeah. Just we... Is that something you believe or just something you want to start a rumor about? <laughs> I just said I was going to start a rumor. You guys are like, I think there's going to be a Mario game. No, no, that's different. <laughs> it's not, there's definitely going to be a Mario game. Dude. They showed it. The rumor is when it's being released and what it's going to be like. But there is definitely going to be a 3D Mario platformer. There's... I like how you just decided, like, I'm going to start this rumor right now. I'm going to start they a are, rumor. They are also porting you heard Mario it here Kart. First. They, they can... are they can... porting Mario Kart 8. So if that throws a wrench in your rumor. Okay, okay. <laughs> They're going to make a Metroid game. 
<laughs> in the future. At some point. Just like ever. <laughs> One day it'll happen again. Didn't you ever play Metroid Federation Force, the critically acclaimed Metroid game that came out like a in the past year? Did it? Did you? It, no, everyone hated it. It's like Ooh. it's like a four. It's kind of got a. It seems like it was a game. It's a 3DS game that was um that seems like the kind of game where they were making it and someone was like, hey, why don't you make this in the Metroid universe? And they were like, okay, but, like, you play as, like, the Federation of Metroid. You play as, like, those people in, like, suits made from Samus's suits technology, kind of. So... And you just play through a lot of, like, Metroid Prime-ish missions... But, like, and then you get, like, little clips from Samus, like, talking sometimes. But most of the time it's like, oh, my gosh, look, Samus Aaron's out there doing cool stuff, isn't she? That's cool. Okay, bye. (laughs) Yeah, the thing is, is that, uh, so I went on an extended vacation recently. um, Mm -hmm. And I visited both uh, former Game Cola editor-in-chief Paul Franzen and... Uh, former Game Cola YouTube administrator Nathaniel Hoover, and actually uh, Nathaniel was talking about Metroid Federation Force, uh, and that I believe he said he enjoyed it. So there well, goes yeah. there goes your rumor. No, no, that no, nobody no. enjoyed it. <laughs> I'm talking about general internet public opinion. From what I heard, it was actually a fairly decent game. But it was just, like, so many people were just like, but this isn't, like, Metroid. Oh, yeah, yeah. And people who, like, and I don't know, maybe if you're really invested in the world, like, just being in the world itself is nice. But there were lots of people who were like, no, I want to be Samus. Do Samus stuff and none of this co-op stuff. Yeah. Like, yeah, if you're looking for a Metroid game, this isn't it. It may be fun, but it's not a Metroid game. Well, it does play, apparently play kind of like Metroid Prime. Mostly, I think, in terms of how it controls, less than in terms of what you do. I think it's very combat-focused. So, yeah, it's uh, there are definitely... So, yeah, they're, they're porting a bunch of games to it. I think Smash 4 is going to be on it. I think... Um, I know that Mario Kart 8 is going to be on it. Skyrim. <laughs> Weirdly. <laughs> has... has uh, how long between Elder Scrolls games did it used to be? Because I feel like this one's just been... They've just been kind of harping on Skyrim for a while. They, it, it has been um, over five years since it came out. I didn't really get into the Elder Scrolls games until just before Skyrim came out, so I'm not exactly sure what the time was between like Oblivion and Skyrim was, but it feels mm-hmm. like they haven't done anything since but it's also like they came out with fallout 4 last year so i don't know this is the same studio right this be- is it's it, bethesda does it, this, this bethesda make it is fallout? i think it so. is bethesda <laughs> <laughs> i know nothing about these games i have only played okay. oblivion i only so... played, i played arena and then i played daggerfall oh boy <laughs> so the first two <laughs> <laughs> Those only had two years between them. So it was two years between one and two. Then it was... Oh, six years. Then Morrowind. Six years. Then oh. uh, five years And then five-ish years again. So they're right? due. They're due yeah. for a new one pretty soon. Yeah. Kind of like uh, Nintendo consoles. You get about five years. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> or less in the case of the Wii U. The Wii U, they didn't even need to make new controllers, though. So, like, so, so the Wii U is sort of reaching the end of its life cycle. Didn't, so, didn't do we they stop producing it or something? They're stopping production at some point if they have not already. I, I feel like there was a rumor though once that where like they said they were stopping and that one wasn't true, hmm. which might be skewing like how long ago that was. I do think they have stopped or are stopping soon, but I remember like a year or two ago 
there was a rumor that they were stopping making them and it was like no this it's they aren't ceasing production it was just like a change in like how they were managing it that got overblown i mean nintendo denies it is ending wii u production that this article that i'm seeing came out november 2nd so it's been about 20 days well i also (laughs) think it's comical like hilarious actually the concept that a year or two ago they had the same uh rumor which would have been what two maybe three years into production <laughs> they're just done with people it. Didn't like it. <laughs> people didn't like it i think it's okay i don't have one but it's all right <laughs> it's there I, it does have some games that I really like on it. It's got Smash 4, which I play all the time at college. But isn't it's that got, um, also available on 3DS? N- n- but it's not good on the 3DS. It's not that good. It's not the same. The 3DS, like, my L and R buttons don't work very well, for one thing. So I can't even do the thing I do where I just dodge the whole time. <laughs> um, it's got Mario Maker. That's a pretty good did you know that's coming to 3DS? Yeah, I, just I know. Saw this, like 20 minutes ago. It's been that that's been a thing for a while. It's just getting Has close it? to it now. Yeah, it's been no, it's been a thing for a while. Because I when remember was people this announced? a while ago. I don't remember how long, but because I, I remember people complaining that like there's some online features that aren't going to be enabled for it. I think it's, mm. I don't think you can do any of the online stuff. I think you have to um. You can just make levels with it and play them. No fun. Maybe. I don't know if that's exactly it. I, it's it's limited in some way. Maybe not exactly like that, though. Mario Kart 8 was fun. Uh, Nintendo Land is really fun. Nintendo Land is underrated, man. I mean, it's like it's just very... It, it really makes use of all the Wii U stuff in a way that I don't think anybody else even really tried to do. <laughs> It's probably kind of sad that the the launch party game thing for the Wii U is probably one of the best implementations of the party game mechanic on the system. Because Mario Party 9 and 10 aren't good, so, you know, there's that. I wrote Mario Party 10's most disappointing award, so... That's true. (laughs) That is true. What was it that you said? To ride around together car or something? <laughs> That's a together car, yeah. <laughs> didn't you, well, didn't you like, look up, like, you are like, what is he talking about? I did. <laughs> and then what was, what was the first, because there was something about, like, the first result that you said was funny. Uh, I don't remember. I don't know if you remember that. No, I don't remember. It was something like, you were like, oh, what's this together car? And then, like, you looked it up, and then it was like, why the oh, yeah, joined yeah. up car in Mario Party 10 is like the worst thing ever. Yeah, 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 yeah. I do remember that now. I don't like Mario Party 10. I don't like Mario Party 9 either. I feel like that has been well established. <laughs> my um, my boyfriend said that he really, really likes... What's it called? Just talking about it. Oh, no. Uh, Mario Party... No. Uh, Mario Kart... No. New Super Mario Brothers U. Is Nintendo Land? Is that what it's called? Yeah, Nintendo Land. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm so tired. <laughs> okay. He said he really liked that. And his um, roommate from last year would give him shit about it because um, he's just like, it's just a tech demo. And my boyfriend would just be like, I don't care. It's a lot of fun. <laughs> So, like, I only played a few games on it, and I think it was pretty fun. Like, yeah, I agree that it's probably the best implementation of, like, party games for mm-hmm. the system. Well, it's like, um, it's, the, I don't think the single player stuff is that fun. It's definitely, but, like, the, the multiplayer stuff, like, with the asymmetrical, um, like, style, where, like, like, the ghost one, where, like, the person with the gamepad is the ghost, and they have to... Like, they're invisible, and they can chase people around. Mm-hmm. And then there's the tag, basically, Mario Chase, which is tag. Like, the person with the gamepad can see where everyone is, where it gets a little map to show where everyone is, whereas um, the the people running just have to, like, look on the screen, and then they also have, like, a hot or cold, like, how far away you are 
sort of mm -hmm. thing. And then the Metroid one is pretty fun, but you need motion pluses and nun or I don't know if you need motion pluses, but you definitely need nunchucks. Mm -hmm. And so there's sort of a limit to how many people can play because because I don't think it uses the gamepad for multiplayer. Yeah. Another thing is that the Wii is now a decade old yeah. as of like. Uh, a yeah. Which is weird. <laughs> yep. Uh, it has been 10 years since the Wii came out. It's pretty wild. But it hasn't been 10 years since Mario Galaxy came out, so I don't feel old yet. Because mm -hmm. that's, the, that's the game I most vividly remember playing on the Wii. Like, when I'm in the, my early days with the Wii. I'll feel old when that thing's a decade old. <laughs> and speaking of uh, glorified tech demos... I do always wonder how many people kept up with their, uh, oh man, I'm gonna do Wii Fit every day. I'm <laughs> gonna do Wii ha. Sports. I'm gonna keep up with it. That's me. That was me. <laughs> and the answer was I did not. <laughs> At all. I'd like to meet the person who's still doing it. Shake their hand. <laughs> like, you deserve... It might country. be a little sweaty, though. Yeah. They just never stop. The only, the only other game they have is Super Smash Brothers, uh, four, and they just they main Wii Fit Trainer, <laughs> and they use they use the balance board as their controller. Is that a thing? I don't think so, but someone would figure out how to do it, because like I mean, I've seen just sort of segue like, I've seen people live stream Overwatch, and they'll like set up. Uh, controller systems where like they'll play Hanzo who is like a character that uses a bow and arrow with like a nerf bow and arrow <laughs> and um oh what were some other ones there was uh there was Hanzo with a bow and arrow oh Diva who pilots like a mech like a little you sit in it mech yeah uh with like with like joysticks like two joysticks um uh Symmetra who has like this like beam that sort of shoots out and does damage, and also like these laser turrets that like cook people. So someone played Symmetra using a microwave. <laughs> <laughs> wow. How? <laughs> there was one more where like it was like a person like actually throwing stuff, and like based on where they threw it was like where they shot. I don't remember though. I don't remember who that was. Oh, people. That's something we could write about on Game Cola. I feel like that's outside the mainstream. What? People? <laughs> I feel like people are pretty mainstream, Jay. I don't know, there aren't that many. <laughs> There's what, like five? <laughs> Total? <laughs> yeah. Wait, did you count Jeff? <laughs> no, I guess there's six. Maybe they are mainstream. And and Tim. Tim. And Tim. Don't forget Tim. Tim. Hold on, wait. <laughs> How many game cola staff members are there? Oh, I wasn't talking. I was just saying names. I wasn't I mean... talking about the game cola staff members. <laughs> I'm just sitting here thinking, like, who is a human? Who do we know? <laughs> Could it be the game cola staff? We have staff members. <laughs> what? We used to. <laughs> well, you know, now we have contributors. Mm -hmm. Right. Oddly, it's... Do we not have, still have some staff members? Uh. Dear, whoa. Are you not technically a staff member? Uh, I feel like I'm one of the few. Like actual legitimate, like what you would consider a staff. I'm okay. If you go by who uses their at gamecola.net email address. <laughs> You specifically, <laughs> that was long before the contributor shift, you said don't use the Game Cola email addresses, they just get spam constantly. I mean, it's true. <laughs> you specifically recommended that we don't use Game Cola email addresses. Uh, yeah. Fun fact um, for my resume for grad school. I actually did put under extracurriculars along with um, my sorority stuff. I did put Game Cola. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and I prayed that no one actually looked. I think they. <laughs> and 
and we're buy into my hospital boyfriend review. Website. We are. No, um, I, I definitely put oh. I definitely put uh, GameCola.net. Uh, I did the uh, I did the design. I did the uh, development. I you know, did the whole WordPress customization. Made some plugins. Um, I I think I also mentioned before that um, when Nathaniel was getting his new job, uh, he put me down as a reference, and I actually had to like get a call on the phone while I was at work and be like, yes. Nathaniel does edit for GameCola.net. <laughs> it, it is real, please believe me. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to make sure, just look it up. <laughs> yeah, and it, I promise it's there. <laughs> no, 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 no. We are a serious thing. It's not just me and him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have put um, I've put like the fact that I've done podcasts before on resume sometimes if I if it's applicable. Yeah. Um. But no one's ever asked for you as a reference for that. I feel like they can just look at the podcast and be like, yes, this is a podcast that exists. Hey, we have over 100 episodes. We do. We are. That's a lot. Yeah, that is not a small number. <laughs> And they're 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 for, it's not like we're not like one of those like ten minute podcast things where they're really more like oh, yeah. short episodes of stuff. Like every one is over except for except for one. Every one is oh not all of them. I guess they didn't used to be over an hour. They're all over thirty minutes except yeah. for one. Yeah, definitely. Are, are you talking the about the April Fool's Day yeah, one? Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. Because it's still t it's it's counted as a number. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> I forgot. Like it, it's actually, it actually, because I, I have a uh, graph of like uh, t times, like how long the podcast, each podcast episode is. Yeah. Just because I thought it would be fun, and I also wanted to like sort of see like, I don't, I don't want to change too much, like too quickly. Yeah. A lot of the time, I mean, this, this one's probably gonna get a lot of whiplash after Diana's two-hour adventure. Yeah. <laughs> um, but. It's also just sort of interesting to see, like, it get bigger, and then it kind of wiggles around, and now it's kind of getting smaller again. Though it is funny, because there is, like, a tiny one, and then right next to it, a giant one <laughs> for Podcast 50. Oh, yeah. Which I do think I actually went through and figured out how long it was. I didn't just put 10 hours in there. I think I, like, went through and added it up. I don't remember what it was, though, because it's all in minutes. So, like, it would be, like, you know, hundreds of yeah, minutes, yeah. some hundreds of minutes. Yeah. So, I, I'm not sure uh, how how much. Off the top of my head, I wouldn't remember the number. Another thing is I might be doing stuff with game, from Game Cola for my final project in one of my classes. Yeah. Cool. I'm going to, I'm going to do um, a concordance analysis on Game Cola articles. And then um, some cluster analysis and see if there's a similar enough structure between certain groups. So, like, do certain authors, like, is it apparent that there's, like, a pattern to certain authors? Is there apparent that there's a pattern to certain types of, um, certain types of articles? Like, is there, like, what are keywords for certain people that, like, is indicative that this is an article that they wrote? <laughs> so probably fangirl would be Diana. Have a very high keenness value. Yes. Swearing. <laughs> so, I, I I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it though because I submitted the proposal, so I have to see if he approves it. Oh yeah. First, I also want to see um, if it could tell who writes. Um, be careful what you search for. Oh. Because I don't think Terrence is uh is on the staff list, is he? Uh, I am actually. Terrence is on the staff list. He is. I just looked at it. She, Terrence is a she. she. Oh, Terrence is a she. Yeah, like I mean, I know it's like uh, Terrence is generally a male name, but um, to my knowledge, Terrence is a female. Okay. Well, I was just a little curious to see if uh, Terrence's writing style was similar to any other uh, game call staff members, and maybe I'll just leave it at that. <laughs> Do you uh do you know if Terrence uh specifically tries to make sure that her articles don't match anything or do you think she just sort of writes normal? 
Uh, I think you'll you'll have to include some early Terrence Atkins articles as well as uh, the later to mm. kind of get a better idea. I see. Yes, um, because as you may recall, Terrence did go to art school, um, and so <laughs> there are some differences between the early Terrence. Oh, that's later right. Terrence. So to get the full picture, you know, you might want mm -hmm. to include some of the earlier ones. I see. The writing style changed slightly, you might say. Mm -hmm. I do think Terminator Console Soccer is one of my favorites. <laughs> console soccer yes for the, for those who missed um the most recent uh mm -hmm. be careful what you search for i'm on i'm on it, I'm on it. Yeah. <laughs> what is what is that though <laughs> what it's the intellivision okay <laughs> it's two terminators we're playing soccer with an intellivision <laughs> and uh <laughs> As, to, Beach, Nintendo. as as discussed on the prior <laughs> Game Cool podcast, uh, Peach Nintendo feet. Peach Nintendo feet. Oh my oh god. My. <laughs> this is beautiful. <laughs> oh my god. Barbie Assassin's Creed. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Mm. I love, I love the, I love the how to steal a game from GameStop list that is just how to <laughs> buy a game at GameStop. Hey, a game to cashiers that's sixty dollars on counter. Yes, run to getaway uh, vehicle. Yes, that is how you steal, kids. Yes, that is how you steal. People being called noobs and ended up being pro. Yeah, an inspiration. Inspirational story of triumph over adversity. They called him noob, learn to play, but he ended up pro. Yes, learn to play. It has a number instead of the word. You know, <laughs> it's way cooler. Yeah, like I... when you spell cool with a K. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell, but he is wearing uh, a backwards baseball cap and fingerless gloves, and he has a popped collar. Oh my god. He's way too cool. I don't know if anyone could tell that those <laughs> were supposed to be fingerless I think gloves. Was. I think, oh, the fingerless gloves, maybe not. <laughs> it may also look like he's facing forward and has <laughs> long bangs. <laughs> oh, or okay. maybe that he, could. Or maybe that he's looking downwards. I'm not sure. <laughs> But then the shirt would definitely look backwards. Yeah, and like the feet kind of. Uh... Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm concerned that uh, the Terminator shotgun seems to be on fire. <laughs> it's shooting. <laughs> Joe. I, I think it's on fire though. Like that's pretty big. <laughs> I mean, it's. I think a double... it's mostly smoke. <laughs> it's a double barrel shotgun. Although, to my knowledge, um, double barrel shotguns do not actually shoot <laughs> twice at once. They don't shoot twice the fire. Yeah, they like they. You get to shoot two times. It's not that it actually shoots two mm. shells. I think that would make sense. That would make sense. Even though it looks to be drawn, the both barrels are firing at once. I do believe that is actually incorrect. Mm. Inaccurate, you could say. You'll have to let Terrence know. Yes. Do we want to move on to games we've been playing? Or Wait. are there any other topics that we want to cover? Wait, real quick. I'm, I'm looking something up. So um, there's a tweet from, I believe, the creator of Hostful Boyfriend. <laughs> okay. That mm -hmm. Diana retweeted. About a week ago. Okay. There's another freaking game. I think. <laughs> I thought they were done. Another, I mean, like a sequel? Or like... I don't think it's a sequel. I think it might just be a short thing. I, I... At least I'm hoping, because I can't handle any more heartbreak. 
So wait, okay, can you explain something to me? How did the yeah. holiday star fit into it, the whole thing? Because that was still about birds, right? Yes, it was. Was it about the same birds? Yes. Okay. Was it like a sequel in terms of like when it took place? You know what? That's a great question. I honestly still don't understand what was happening. I think it was before <laughs> what happens in Hospital Boyfriend, but I'm not completely sure if this is some kind of alternate universe or something. I don't want this game to get that deep, but at the same time, nothing makes sense. Okay. It was that was a holiday star short compared to the no. original? No, it was, it was like it was... the same length. Okay. It was terrible. And is this one going to be more like directly as well, why don't you send us did you send us the tweet? I can yeah, I can send you the tweet. Send me the um, tweet and then also email it to me so I can put it in the show notes. <laughs> I don't know if it's another sequel or if it's something that's being added on or something. I just don't want this. Because <laughs> I Let's have see. to play it. Okay, so it's a bunch of pictures. Yeah, that's um, all it is. Which is why I'm confused. Tohiri Nigashuki Wait, okay, hold on. Tori. Yeah. Nishiki Koji. Yep. Special edition. Yeah. I don't... I, I have no idea. Like, this is a character from... Yeah, there's oko Yeah. The, uh, last game. Holiday Star. I didn't ask for this, and that's all that matters. Who's, is, who's Yoko? Is that like a can... Is there like a canon name for the main character? Yoko is the... Uh, yeah, I think it is. Oh, uh, do we want to see if they've said anything else? Or is this is this the developer, or is it just like... I think it's the developer. Yeah, okay. Hyoko Tasaka is the canon name. I'm, I'm doing some quick Twitter research right now. <laughs> I'm angry. I don't need this. I, like, I still have to do the review of the second game. And I finished oh. it almost a year ago. <laughs> You don't want those employers seeing it, though. Get hired first. No, this is for grad school. It's even worse. School. I can only find Pokemon yeah. Go stuff on the Twitter, so... Mm. I don't think there's been more news yet. Good. <laughs> anyway. You have to write that review. Speaking of writing stuff, I have started writing the column that I talked about a while ago. Um, every Mega Man weapon. Oh, yeah. I've seen the draft, or rather, mm -hmm. I haven't seen the draft, but I have seen that the draft exists. Right. Yeah. I've been I've been slowly chugging away at it. the 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 first one is just a little tricky because I have to get the introduction to the column series, and then oh, yeah. also the first weapon that I'm going to cover. Because I'm going to do the first article is going to be the plasma cannon, which is basically the main weapon in Mega Man One, Two, and Three. And then the second one's going to be the Mega Buster, which is the charged weapon from 4, 5, and 6. Yeah. And then that way, when I start actually covering the regular weapons, I can do it. The number of the article will match the number of the Robot Master that the weapon belongs to. Oh. So that'll be fun. So Article 3 will be Rolling Cutter, because Cutman is number 3 of the <laughs> Robot Masters. I like it. So that's the idea. But the the problem is is that the it, the plasma cannon is so like general like it's got to be really comprehensive. So I'm gonna I'm gonna try to chug away at that as soon as I finish the podcast stuff. Yeah, how much can be said about the basic blaster? I mean, like it it's sort of like you need to understand it because every single special weapon you know it has infinite energy, so every single special weapon has to be better than it. Otherwise, why would you ever use a special weapon when you have something that can that doesn't have ammo? So, like, we have to understand, that, like, the rate of fire. We have to understand, um, like, sort of how it, how it affects bosses and enemies in different games. Yeah. And so there, there is some stuff to talk about. The first, for the, for the plasma can, there's not a whole lot, which is why the introduction is also getting lumped with it. The Mega Buster will have a lot more because it also varies from game to game a little bit. Hmm. And so I can talk about sort of the evolution of it. Like, especially from 4 to 5 is a pretty big transition. 
But then even from between the games, are like how it charges changes. Because in four, like you could charge and then hold a charge as you switch to another weapon. And if you came back to it, then you could like immediately release a charge that you had stored up. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. In trick. four, you can't. In five, they changed it so that it's bigger. But now if you get hit, you lose the charge. Hmm. I don't remember how if six does that, too. The six, the shot is a little smaller. But like in four, the issue with the charge shot was that it wasn't. It seemed kind of like a late addition because there were a lot of enemies that like didn't really. It didn't really seem to do that much more damage than your regular shot, except against bosses with like really specific health bars. Hmm. But there there were just a lot of enemies that would still take like two shots. Small enemies that would still take like two shots from a charge shot, which seemed like overdoing it. So, I'll talk about that. There's a lot to talk about the charge shot. Not so much the lemon shooter. <laughs> so, games that we're playing. Mm-hmm. Maybe even currently, Anna? Yes. As in... I'm not playing it right this second. Oh. <laughs> I bought a new 3DS recently because I've made more money because job. Oh. And so, I finally, after many years... Have finally been able to buy Earthbound, which is a lot of fun, and I like it a lot. And mm -hmm. recently, um, the day that I bought my new 3DS, my sorority little came over and we did some crafts, and they were Earthbound crafts. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was yeah, a lot of fun. Those. The little perler bead things. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hers turned a hers turned out a lot better than mine. But the reason for that is because she only did one, and I decided I was going to do four things yeah. on the same pegboard. Oh. And it probably would have been better if I knew how to use an iron and also didn't shake. Like, my hands shake a lot, so I tried to be as steady as I could, but it didn't work out as well as I planned. But they still turned out okay. So, had you ever seen Earthbound before? Like, had you seen a playthrough of it? Yeah, I um I actually watched uh Paul Franzen's on the YouTube on the game called YouTube. Did you see the that? one that uh, Diana's always talking about yeah. how she's gonna beat it someday. Yeah, the what she she's gonna do better than him. Um <laughs> <laughs> it might not be as hard as it seems. <laughs> That's it really already mean doesn't seem that say. hard. <laughs> yeah. That's mean of me to say, but I mean, I don't I think like... Paul has ever claimed to be good at games. <laughs> I feel like Diana has mentioned it with Paul on the podcast, and he's been like, yeah, that, that seems feasible. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it probably won't be a hard feat, because, like, there are parts of the game where it's kind of just like, okay, this was a lot harder than what I was doing moments ago, but otherwise it's pretty okay. I like it. It's a good game. <laughs> I'm interested in playing um, the other two mother games. I've heard that you definitely shouldn't, even though like it's mm. the first one, you definitely shouldn't play the original mother first. Okay. You should only pl you should only play it. I mean, like as a, you should play Earthbound, and then if you get really invested in yeah. Earthbound's like story and characters, then you should play Mother because then it's like yes, you like this style of game and like this world yeah but yeah. apparently the first one is very grindy oh actually um have either of you played undertale i don't remember i bought it <laughs> <laughs> and i keep I meaning to it. play it <laughs> i bought it for two people who are both family sharing with me so i technically have the game okay i have not played it myself yet i've played it a little bit but not much okay excellent game i loved it it was great um and then you know, i kept telling christina i was like a lot of the stuff that's going on in here is a huge reference to earthbound like so See, many... that's one of that's sorry not to interrupt yeah. but that's um one of the reasons that i haven't played it yet is because i want to play earthbound first oh, okay. so that i get all the references yeah no um i would say it's worthwhile um and actually yeah, do yourself a favor and play Earthbound first, because, mm. okay, I love Earthbound. I'm a fan. 
of old-timey games that are grindy and slow, but after, like, taking the shift of moving from I just played Undertale to, oh, now Christine is curious about Earthbound, let's go show her what that's about. It was so slow. <laughs> so slow, so many battles. I mean, granted, I didn't do the, uh, the genocide route, which is like just constant battles, apparently. Um, yeah, it is. But, wow. Like, a lot of walking, huge space between everything. Wait, are you talking about Undertale or Earthbound, Earthbound. at this point? Trying to go back okay. and play Earthbound after playing Undertale. Like, Undertale is a very clean, modern game. Like, it's polished, it's very, like, quick and to the point, and, like, there's a lot of story, and, like, you get story during battles, so there's not this, like, oh, I have to talk, and then I have to fight, and then I have to talk again. It's like, you're getting it all at once, you're walking, you're talking, you're fighting, you're talking, like everything's happening in mm -hmm. Undertale. And then in Earthbound, it's very, well, I just walked for the last five minutes, and I fought about 18 times, and nothing happened, and now I'm talking to somebody slowly. <laughs> it, is, it is interesting, like, even as a fan of old games, after playing something good and modern, it can be hard to go back. Mm. So that's definitely my plan, is to play Earthbound first and then play Undertale. Yeah. I'd say that's a good idea. <laughs> and yes, uh, especially with it fresh in your mind, you will get a lot of uh, references that were made. There are also apparently some Final Fantasy references, but... Yeah. yeah, I think I'm going to yeah. play Final Fantasy. <laughs> well, maybe you can watch uh, a couple of scenes from uh, Michael Gray's Let's Play of Final Fantasy III um, that is on Game Cole's YouTube channel, gc.net. How old is that? The old. game or the... <laughs> the the playthrough. Play. Um... <laughs> relatively old uh, game Call youtube channel has some old playthroughs like there's like a, there's some stuff there that's like seven or eight years old on there like it's not some of the oldest stuff uh well it, okay part 112 was posted in 2010 on the website <laughs> mm. oh boy i would just, i just went to the youtube channel and found like the oldest videos yeah the the first playthrough that we have is Final Fantasy VI Advance. Okay, wow. So it is our Seven oldest. Seven years ago. Wow. Yeah, I can believe is, it. Is that what you were talking about? Yes, um, that is the one that... Okay, I say three. The original right, name right. was three. It's six. Okay. Um, but yeah, I would say that the most obvious uh, Final Fantasy reference is is a very specific scene in Final Fantasy VI there. I'm trying to remember if there were any others. Like, I would have caught them because I was, at the time, a big Final Fantasy fan. But I can't think of any off the top of my head. I feel like that was the only apparent one. Because I've never really played the Final Fantasy, any of the games. I haven't played any in the series, except maybe a little bit of the first one. Yeah. So, and the only reason I knew about that scene... <laughs> was because I was, like, I've watched a little bit of Michael's playthrough, and yeah. I only, and somehow I was able to pay attention to that one scene, and then yeah. for the rest, my ADD took over, and I didn't pay attention. <laughs> I mean, it is, like, kind of a very different thing within Final Fantasy, the one scene. Yeah. And then also, it's extremely specific. Like, it's a very obvious reference. Even if you'd never played the game, you would be like, this is referencing something. It has to be. <laughs> so, Undertale, great game. It is interesting. I'm just back on the, the Game Cool YouTube channel. It's interesting to see, like, how the playthroughs sort of developed over time. Like, for a while, it was just... I don't know how many days are in between all of these, but, like... The first video is how to spell Game Cola. <laughs> and then the next 32 videos are Final Fantasy 6 slash 3. Wow. And then, can you guess what the, the next playthrough that was started was? Uh, 999. 
<laughs> yes. 999 isn't that old. <laughs> Day of the Tentacle. Really? Mm-hmm. See, and then that whole thing goes through. And then we have Mega Man Dr. Wily's Revenge. Oh no! Then and then there's a little bit more of Day of the Tentacle, sort of interspersed there. But then they both sort of end at the same time, and we get back to Final Fantasy for another like 20 episodes. <laughs> and then Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles, and it's very clear that this is like like 10 minute YouTube times. Yeah, back in the day. Because because there's so many videos that are there's a lot that are like a little bit over 10 minutes. Yeah. So we must have gotten verified <laughs> or something. I don't know how that worked back in the day, seven years ago. But like nothing is over, nothing's over 15 minutes, which I think was the limit for a long time. Yeah. Um, like I think that it was generally somewhere around 10 minutes, but I don't think it was a hard limit. And uh, mm, but Yeah, like, that's what it's looking like. But 15 was definitely like, yeah, you're not making it. I think some of these were all uploaded at the same time though. Cause like the Mega Man X playthrough, two is after part six just in the order of uploads i should watch through some of these we need to we need to have more i also wanted to try to do, start doing more um playthroughs on the channel yeah especially now that nine or whatever whichever virtue's last reward is done now that that's done i feel like we need a, a new playthrough that started i think that started around the time i started college <laughs> <laughs> Virtue's last reward. <laughs> yeah, because I remember there was a day, there was a day that um, there was a time when Diana couldn't record, or they decided no, they decided that I was coming on. I forget why, but they decided that I was going to be com doing commentary, and um, I was there around a time that most people would be in school, but it's because college isn't like a high school. <laughs> Hmm. where I had, like, a class over at 2 or something, so I could just go back to my dorm and be like, hey, I can do it now if we, <laughs> we need to, but yeah. The first Virtue's Last Reward was uploaded in March 2013. Oh, that's a, oh my god, that's before I even started college. That was, like, the last few months of high school. And then, uh, the last episode... <laughs> is um july 23rd 2016. Wow. <laughs> so oh boy. three years and three months pretty much much wow wow so yeah we need a new we need a new thing to have for three years also i think we need content True. in general yeah yeah like i uh, if... if i had more time i do have like so many games that I would be like, man, that would be cool to play these games for Game Cola if I actually had time to mm -hmm. do so. Yeah. Speaking of stuff, Jenny, did you ever actually download the live streams from any of our past few ones? Yeah, they should be on YouTube. Did you download the Crys Crystallis? think so because it was in three parts um mm -hmm. like the thing is is like i i do try my best to make sure that those are uh transferred over but yeah um i haven't published them yet obviously all right as long as they're downloaded because <laughs> yeah. they're gone now yeah 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 how long has it been? i was worried well, oh, how long has it been since october because i remember it's <laughs> been <laughs> two months yeah well, whatever day it is, it has been that many months and that many days. <laughs> so. One month and that many, many days. Yes. But, Everybody uh, knows that, that we were in November. Oh, yeah, that's true. Cause, uh, that I also need to get on Diana to start uploading the rest of the podcast to the YouTube channel because it only goes up to 92 right now. I've also... And we are 10 past that. Oh, well. Yeah. No, I've been super busy lately. Uh, like, I've been getting behind on my Game Cola tasks, my to-do list. Well, it, it wasn't like a, it wasn't like a, why isn't this on YouTube? It was just like, do you have it? Because if yeah, not, yeah, it's yeah. gone forever. Yeah. You're, you're, <laughs> you're what, 12 hours or whatever. Yeah. 
No. I just didn't want it to be gone forever, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You spent <laughs> that was a that long time. time. Yes. Uh, you do. Remember that time I fell asleep? So I felt so bad, but I was so tired. I'm always tired. I forgot about that. When actually. it was still on the on the Twitch, um, I did watch through some of it, and it was really interesting to see myself so frustrated, uh, <laughs> especially at the end. Where I died to the easy boss, apparently. That is funny. Oh, so, video games, right? Oh yeah, video games. Yeah. I um, was just about to say. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. I feel like uh, I don't think I've played a video game recently. Ever. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? I'm trying to think, no, um, because I was supposed to play another thing after Undertale, and I can't remember what it was, but two things. Number one, uh, I am planning on buying a laptop that is actually capable of playing a video game, <laughs> um, because we had a very frustrating time trying to play basically anything uh, more <laughs> intensive than Undertale <laughs> on Christine's mm -hmm. computer. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, I, I might be playing more games coming up. Uh, but also, uh, to that end, there is currently a big um, charity sale thing going on on Itch.io. It'll sadly probably be over by the time that um, this gets published. But uh, for $20, I actually donated a little bit more, um, you get like 151 games. <laughs> uh, and not all of them are garbage. Uh, I did get... Not all of them. <laughs> I'm sorry, my fellow <clears throat> my fellow indie developers, some of your games... I'm not downloading them, I'm sorry. But uh, one that I was excited to see, and actually uh, basically convinced me to go ahead and get this, among others that are well worth the money, um, Read Only Memories was on the <gasps> list, right? I love that game. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, I, I, uh, I thought you would be excited because, um, like I've, I've heard you talk about it, and I was like, huh. Like at first, I was like, what is this game? Like sometimes I'm a little wary of like uh, other indie games, I guess. Um, but like I started looking around at pictures, and I heard you talking about it, and I was like, hmm, maybe this would be uh, worth buying. Uh, but I was like waiting for it to go on sale, and then I saw this deal, and I was like, yes, now is the time. Let me know what you think. I will. I I'm, love that game. I'm excited <laughs> to play it when I do finally get a chance to sit down and do so. <laughs> Did you write a review for that, Anna? Uh, there is a review sitting... Uh, yeah, there, there's a draft. Sitting there. It might not get finished until maybe winter break, because work and school but it'll happen eventually the draft has started <laughs> there uh i keep looking at the drafts and uh like there, there's this gap where there's stuff that was edited in the last few days and then suddenly it's august <laughs> <laughs> It's just because everybody posted whatever they were working on in September. <laughs> Let's see. What is the oldest draft? I probably I, I probably need to go through and maybe delete some. Wow, Robin writes a lot. Or That's rather, a good thing. Yes, uh, or rather, <laughs> Robin, can you please complete something? <laughs> Okay, I mean, and that's to say that Robin is actually one of our most prolific uh, writers. Right, right, right. But on top of that... It is a funny joke. <laughs> on top of that, I'm just going through the, like, pages of drafts, and it's like, Robin, 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 Robin. Uh, and I'm like, wait a second, this is 2014 now. <laughs> when did you get on the <laughs> staff, and why have you not completed this? <laughs> then again, oh, wow, ouch. Ouch. 2014, speaking of why have you not completed this, there's like two or three... Oh, ouch. Wow, has it been that long since I started that? What is it, Jay? No, there's like... There's three... Hold on, okay. There's one about game development where I was going to talk about the like... Uh, the difficulties that I had. 
<coughs> with getting my game uh, noticed, I guess. And then there was another one from my... And it's weird to think that it's like a year and a half ago now. Um, I started to write about Ragnarok Online. Oh, wow. Cause that I remember was... you talking about that. I talked about it recently. Um, but this was... I. I was getting, like, super depressed while trying to find a job. Um, and so my, my days were basically spent playing Ragnarok online and writing resumes and submitting applications. Uh, most of my time was spent uh, playing Ragnarok online while also uh, writing resumes and submitting applications. And so I had a bunch of thoughts about, like, wow, even though this is literally the exact same game, nothing is the same. And so I was going to, like, write up a, an article about that. But apparently that was a year and a half ago. <laughs> Let me see. Because you, you're looking through all of them, right? Yes. Um, I don't think I should, that... I should look in... I think you can see yours. I don't think you yeah, can. Yeah. Oh, wait, no. I, I think I get a... I think you can because I think you're still technically an editor because um, I didn't turn that off. <laughs> I going to say, am I technically on staff as an editor? <laughs> I'm not sure at what point you become on staff. Although, like, I guess... Uh, like, if there were staff members, uh, the college kids as a crew would be, I think, the last, like, official staff members. Neato. Congratulations, you did it. <laughs> In January, Talks. it'll be, like, our fourth anniversary, and that's wow. amazing. Wow. Because <laughs> I thought I would have to, like, leave at some point, but I've pretty much just been like, nope, I'm still here. <laughs> I mean, look at uh, Michael Gray. He quit the staff about, what, four or five times? True. <laughs> and yet, he's still around. Kind of. Game call is creepy uncles. <laughs> <laughs> I lost it when I heard that, honestly. I, I was, like, in that. public, too. Oh, yeah, I can look at... I can, look, I can still look at all the drafts. See, there's, there's my me every Mega Man. Make a good Mega Man level. Which I'm, I'm, I'm having a heck of a time writing that. Mm -hmm. It's really, cause like, I, I, it's, it's, it's a really fine line between what I want to say because of it being, it's like a fan game, and like I get that, but at the same time, like you kind of have to judge it as, like, it's some but people are gonna play it, and it's like you have to judge it as, is it fun to play? Cause I like, I, it's really cool. Yeah. Like the idea of it, but like there's just a lot of levels that aren't fun to play. Yeah. There's some glitches that I don't really like that I, that kind of like break some of the levels, and I just don't want to be so too harsh on it. But at the same time, like, and also just still write something entertaining, and like substantial. But I, because I don't want to cover like every level. I feel like that's getting like too specific. Yeah. But it's really because it's not like cohesive, right? Because it every level is made by, by one specific different person. Yeah. So like to really cover everything, it's it's a it's this it's a weird balance of trying to of not going too broad or too specific. So that's where that kind of is right now. Oh, uh, did you figure out? Look at what the the oldest. Which one the oldest is? Um, it was Sean Larvik talking about uh, the ten reasons Escape Velocity Nova. Hmm. Let me oh, let me preview. Let's see. Did he actually write anything? Oh wow, uh, there are ten reasons. Actually, this is basically a complete article. I think it just needs. <laughs> I think it just needs images. Do we want to find images and post it? Hold on. Uh, you know, and sometimes I think about that honestly. Is like there are a lot of things in here that are basically complete. I think I asked. Um, I asked uh, Christian Porter one time. <laughs> If I could publish an article of his that was from like a year after in the past at the time of me asking, but basically, um, it was completely complete. Like there was nothing not done about it. Um, and I saw it sitting there in drafts and I was like, I need articles. Can I just publish this? I guess I should talk about the games I've been playing. Yes. Um, yes, please do. Uh, it's been, it's been Overwatch again. Mostly they were just released a new update. Which has like changed a lot, and it's really good. They've added a bunch more game modes, which was like one of the main complaints people have about the game, is that even for forty dollars, there's only like sort of, it's very limited. Like there was basically like 
quick play and competitive, and then a random like brawl with some weird setting, and that was kind of it. And now they've, and then even in those things, there were only like three different game types for that across all the maps. And so now they've added two more completely new game types. They've tweaked a lot of the characters, and um, they, instead of having a weekly brawl, they took the most popular brawl, made it so you could play it whenever, and then put all the other brawls into its own, like, queue, and then it just sort of randomly picks one whenever you're in that queue. And so and it's just a lot of fun, and I'm really enjoying it. And it's also, I mean, it, it, it won't be the case now, when you hear it, but it's a free weekend now. But I couldn't get any of my friends to play with me over the free weekend. I guess it's not the free weekend anymore. It was the free weekend. I don't know how long it actually lasted. I feel like the last free weekend lasted longer than a weekend. But maybe not this long. Try to figure out when we're when we're recording now, guys. Good luck. Uh November twenty second, twenty sixteen. Dang it, Jetty. <laughs> Dang it, Jenny. <laughs> you spoiled the surprise! If only there was a way to, just, <laughs> like, prevent that part from getting into the podcast. There isn't, though. Not at all. <laughs> video games are great. I like video games. I do like video games. You know, and it's funny, though, is that, like, I almost like them more as, like, an academic subject than I do. I mean, I enjoy <laughs> playing them. But I feel like most of my time is spent thinking about, writing about, and, like, generally considering. I was just going to ask if we were done, and it sounds kind of like we are. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. My internet just sort of dropped for a little bit. I don't know why. Wait, can I tell a story real quick? Sure. Tell a story. So, we're recording this in November, and November is National Novel Writing Month. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. For this year... I tried writing, like, several different things, but then life got in the way, so I couldn't write a bunch of stuff like I planned. Yeah. But one of my little projects was a dating sim I said I would write about a year ago <laughs> about mashed potatoes, not mashed potatoes, but about potatoes. Okay. So I actually started it, and there are exactly, um, let, let, let me look. The main character's name is you <laughs> at the moment. <laughs> Excellent choice. I think there there are at least three there are only two pages? Oh there are there are two pages plus three lines on the third page. <laughs> and one of the favorite things I've written so far is you is still screaming. <laughs> but yeah, it's the game where you date potatoes. Um and you have to pick which one you want to date. Before you decide to just make them all into mashed potatoes. The cream of the crop, as it were. <laughs> but yeah, that's my little story. I won't, I, I'm i not going to finish it for a while, but. Are you, I will, because I don't I know how to write Can I volunteer to contribute story. potato slash plant puns? Of course, please feel free. If anybody, if this makes it onto the podcast, feel free to help me in any way, shape, or form because. I don't know how to make it. I don't know how to write a dating sim or a visual novel, and this is both of those. And when you finish not going it, too great. When you finish it, we'll um we'll do a dramatic reading, and have the yeah. viewers we'll have the viewers make uh, decisions. Yeah. Like at all the decision points. Oh man, th- can, that'll be great. We can live stream it. Yeah. So. Um. <laughs> This is actually something that, like, I talked about with Paul last year. He, um, he sent me, uh, um, like, over Twitter, he sent me a tweet about something he wrote down about these potatoes. And I have to find it real quick. Uh, So, it was a little while ago, though. Is you also a potato? No, you is not a potato. You is a human. Okay. You is, you is the human who is going to eat the potatoes and then finds out that the potatoes can talk and are just like what in god's name is happening oh and is screaming and they're just like why are you screaming and you just like why wouldn't i be screaming right now you need to have a couch potato joke in there somewhere i need to you're right can the potatoes move or can they just talk i'm still deciding it would probably help 
if it um, if they could move. Halfway through the game, they turn into like potato people, like you know, like no. how, like like how people like how in uh, what Dandelion, Dandelion. The, the animals turn into like kind of people, but with like animal parts still, I think. Yeah. So they turn into regular people, but with some potato parts still. Oh boy. Like potato ears. <laughs> And um, potato eyes; those are an actual Ugh. thing. So they just—they just have—they just have, have no noses, and they have like dots for eyes. These are fantastic ideas. Oh God. And then, you, and, then you, and then and then when they kiss, it tastes like French fries. Yes. <laughs> All right, are we done? I think we're waiting on uh, Twitter. Oh, okay. I can't find it. But it was something about them singing a song together. I'm like, I don't remember ever discussing this or any music at all. <laughs> what? So I don't know how he had that written down, but it's there. But yeah, that's the end of my little story. Coming. Uh, or is it Ma- only Ma- the beginning? <laughs> Mashmaker coming maybe eventually one day. Mashmaker. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I still have like the list of potential titles written down in a notebook. <laughs> And that's the only thing written down in the notebook so far. Wow. Yeah, I think that's, that's hard. I think that's hard to beat. All right. Well, thank you for listening to this edition of the Game Cola podcast. If you like what you heard, be sure to check us out on our actual internet website, GameCola.net. Gaming outside the mainstream. Or check us out on our YouTube channel, GC.net, the letter G, the letter C, the word dot, and the word net. You can also check us out on various social media things, such as Facebook and Twitter. If you search for Game Cola, you'll find us. You can also find us on twitch.tv slash Game Cola, where we'll do live streams. And you can find us on iTunes. Just search for Game Cola and rate us highly if you like us. And if you'd like to send us emails on the podcast, then email us at podcast at gamecola.net and we will read out your emails and answer any questions that you have. Send us emails or we'll talk more about potatoes. <laughs> Send us emails and we'll talk more about potatoes. <laughs> depends Whatever on, works. Yeah, it, it depends on the, the con, uh, content of the email. So. All right. Well, thank you again for listening. Have a wonderful day and we will see you next month. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Uh, it. Oh, sorry. Can you guys hear that? (laughs) Sorry, I'm driving. Jenny's Skype icon is driving away. (laughs) (laughs) The concept of video games. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Joe. Joseph Martin. Come back. Our podcast commander. Oh no! What will we do? I'm gonna keep screaming because you know that's gonna help. Can I? Can I? Oh no! I, I'm trying. Me too. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> it's like that little, like here we tried and then failed <laughs> noise. Yeah. I uh. I just, no. <laughs> I just picture us like throwing a life preserver out. <laughs> And it just keeps missing. Yes. <laughs> oh. Hi, I'm back. Oh, Hi. I'm back. You did it. I almost I almost just decided to do the ending just by myself. <laughs>